Um, hey everyone, I'm Mary Beth McAndrews from Dread Central, and I am here today with the director and writers of Neon Lights, um, Ruiz Bay Hadari and Dana Abraham. Hello, how are you guys doing? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having us. I'm super yes, stoked to chat about your movie. So first, what I want to I want to hear about is who who came to who with Neon Lights first? Like, what was that kind of process like of who had the idea first, if that's something that you guys can talk about? Yeah, Ruz, you want to start or you want me to go? Yeah, so the, I'll, I'll do a quick one and Dana, maybe fill in the blanks. So, OK, Dana and I met through a mutual friend at the beginning of this insane pandemic that we've all been living through. And can you continue to live through? And we, you know, for a lack of a better term, we fell in love like instantly, creatively, and as people, um, it felt like we had known each other for lifetimes. And we were so determined to make a movie as soon as we could because, you know, we really understood with the situation that the world was in that tomorrow is definitely not certain. Not that it ever was, but it just gave us that realization. And so we were like, let's make a movie here and now. And let's go for it. And Dana already had this, this title. And we just built a story together off that. And Dana brilliantly inked the screenplay. Cool. I'll, I'll take all that compliment. That's all we have to say to that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean Ruth's been pretty much on point. Um, I'd written the screenplay a couple of years ago at the back of like my friend's pickup truck, like on the way home from New York City. City. We went through this like weird town in the state of New York and uh, I had come up with this psychological thriller. But when I had met uh, Ruse Bay, we wanted to make something that was condensed, that was um, distilled down. And, and the thematics of the film really revolved around mental health, financial familial failure and, and childhood trauma and romanticism, all aspects that really were prevalent and current for everybody during the pandemic, especially the beginning where we were kind of enclosed within our homes. Yeah. And the most important aspect of the screenplay was distilling and boiling it down to the point where we could accomplish it with minimal casting and minimal crew. So scale was still large in scope of as far as this cinema goes, but small in, in the pedigree of what, how much crew we needed and locations were required. So that in essence became actually a better project than I had originally planned it out, so. Oh, cool. And, and with, without sacrificing um, cinematic integrity and meaningful storyline and character arcs. Absolutely. Yeah, because I mean, the film is just on a technical level beautiful to look at. I mean, with the cinematography, the lighting, I mean, it looks so crisp and gorgeous. So it's, it's so impressive to hear talk to the indie horror makers who are like, oh yeah, no, this is nothing. And I'm like, you fooled me. So congratulations. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so you. much. Yeah. But so Dana, you, your character Clay is complicated, to put it lightly. Yep. And you, I was excited to talk to you because the way you play him, and I was like, I wonder what you're like in person versus how you <laughs> play him because he's so quiet and he has that little kind of giggle. I'm not quite sure what you would call it, the laugh. So what was it like creating his character? Because you really become Clay. Well, um, Roosevelt knows me pretty well. I'm pretty much Clay. I just put on a show for you guys. <laughs> this is a real <laughs> I mean, I mean <laughs> I mean, I'll give Dana a lot of credit here. Never have I ever seen the amount of prep and dedication and commitment to, to taking on a character. I've never seen this. I've heard about it. I've read about it. But Dana lost weight. Dana was working on his character 24-7. He would come to me. We would meet up. And he would show up in character. He would at two in the morning, call me to ask me to run through scenes with him. So sure, he can say he, you know, of course that character comes out of him and he personifies it. But I can honestly say I've never seen someone so dedicated to making the character what it is. Never. And I'm so proud of him for it. Thanks, man. So I'll just honestly just sit here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just take it. Uh, no, thank you, man. Uh, you know what? Like, it, it's Ruse and I work really well together for obvious reasons. We have such great chemistry. He is my brother. We, that's why we went on to make a second film and run our third together. But when it came down to Clay, uh, to answer your question with specificity, um, I remember uh, I did an exercise that I learned really early in, in, in acting school in, in Los Angeles, Spaz Surgery. It was take your character to the mall. So you dress like the character, you take the character to the mall, and you and you, you know, write down notes and how you felt. 
because the the thing is mary beth like i've never really i've never led a movie never mind a movie where the character was so complex yeah. so I, I figured in the first ever film i'm going to write something that was super challenging for myself to showcase my abilities and work really really hard at it but for Clay, that specific laugh, the hand gestures, and the way he looks uh, down and just only quickly glances up, all those nuances, those idiosyncrasies, it just really came down to his personality and who he was and what it is that he was trying to protect himself from. So his hands came down to, he's, uh, he writes coding, so he wants to always protect his fingers because they're his prized possession. The eyes not going up for me, it was, it was out of respect. Like he just didn't want to always gaze at people straight on, so he'd keep his eyes down. And then the laugh, uh, Ruse and I were talking to a psychotherapist from the University of Toronto. And one of the things she was discussing was that uh, individuals that are on that level of spectrum, they have tics and some, some like in instances where they're uncomfortable or they're feeling awkward, they do certain things. For me, I've noticed since being aware of that was I'd hum a little bit, like I'd, I'd hum to myself or I'd, you know do a jingle thing. So for Clay, it was actually a giggle or a laugh because he's trying to relieve himself of the pressure and tension. And then as I'd rehearse it and work on it, I was like, oh, man, it's uncomfortable for me to do. But then I realized it's uncomfortable for him as well. So I just kept going with it. And, and the, we rehearsed one day and I tried it out with Luz Bay, probably at three in the morning when he was already asleep. <laughs> but it just worked. And, and we just really kept going with it. But the most important thing was for Ruse and I were we didn't want to create a comic book character. We didn't want to be disrespectful to individuals that have uh, or do experience these types of mental breakdowns or illnesses. So we wanted to be as real as possible. And so despite it being a genre film, it's almost kind of a drama in the sense of character building. Yeah, that's incredible. Like that is an incredible amount of research and work you put into the character. And then, I mean, it really shines through. There were so many moments where I'm like, oh, this is like the detail that you get is really quite amazing. And so what was it like working both of you with the rest of this cast, especially Kim Coates? You have some really intense Dana moments with Kim Coates as Denver. And so what were those moments like for you in terms of acting? Because he's creep he's a creep he's a creepy actor. A nice guy, <laughs> yeah. but creepy actor. <laughs> I mean, you're absolutely right. Like it kind of goes back, even Waterworld, uh, you know, I, I feel like I don't know how to say paper anymore because of him, you know what I mean? <laughs> and you continue into Tig and like, you know, he's in that one particular scene where he's in the morgue with the, with the deceased body. Like you're absolutely right. He does play those characters well, but that's exactly why it tied into when Roosevelt and I were trying to figure out who our Denver should be. He made the most amount of sense. Yeah. But um, again, to go back to your question, to work with him was just phenomenal. I mean, First and foremost, he's a professional. Uh, he's just very, very strategic and very smart with his choices and, and his behavior. He's very loose and free when it comes to actually showing up to set. And then on top of that, um, he just brings a level of experience that, I mean, obviously for a first time lead and first time actor at that caliber, I've never experienced before. So working with him where he's picking up what you're throwing down just gives you a level of confidence that I do not think even experience would give you. So in that, in that quick moment, in my first movie, I, I just garnered so much confidence that it, it helped me propel through the rest of the uh, filming. Um, and, and the rest of the cast was brilliant. I just really, it was just a, really a pitch and catch. And Luz Bay did such a great job at uh, choosing his, his performers and, and really guiding us through and navigating us through the production. Sure, that's amazing. Um, and Kim had nothing but amazing things to say about you, Dana, and working with you, so. Amazing, he better. <laughs> <laughs> I'll shoot him a text. <laughs> okay. And then my last question for you, um, and Bruce Bay, I wanna start with you, is if you were gonna program your perfect double feature with Neon Lights, what film would you pair with it? Identity. Mm, interesting. There is, a, there is, people starting to talk about identity more now, like in the past couple of months, I've seen more people bringing up identity and it's it's because it's worth it. But I love identity, that. Identity and if you want a throwback, Hitchcock's Rebecca. <gasps> okay. Well, that's a good triple feature. I like that idea. <laughs> and Dana, what about you? You know, it's it's funny that you, because you have talked about that, Ruse, and I, I definitely agree with you. Uh, for me, it was Jacob's Ladder, like mind unraveling, like oh. it's just kind of like you don't know what's going on. It's just constantly keeping you on your toes and try you're trying to navigate, and it's very cerebral. And I really I found Jacob's Ladder to be kind of what I tied myself to. Cool. Well, thank you both so much for taking the time to chat with me today Pleasure. about Neon Lights. Congratulations on the on the film. It's amazing, and I'm glad everyone can can finally see it. Thank you so much for having us, Mary Beth.